Good morning, everyone, and happy day after Christmas, right? <laughs> Amen. I hope you all had a great celebration yesterday. And you know what? Even if you didn't, I encourage you to just be in full expectation of what God is going to do in your life in 2022. That's not what we're going to talk about today, but I want to encourage you that there is always a new hope in God, that there's always something new to discover in God, that there's always a new thing we should believe in God for. You say, but Pastor Nett, what is that? Well, when you pray, when you seek God, he'll begin to show you the new things that he has for you in 2022. So we're excited about the new things. We're excited about the new promotions. We're excited about the new places. We're excited about the new faces we're going to see in 2022 and so much more. But that's not what I'm preaching. That's just a preview of what is to come. Glory to God. So let's pray before we get into the word today. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, God, that this is our last Sunday of 2021. And Lord, we choose in you to finish strong. And we choose to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Because your word tells us as we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that all these other things are added unto us. So we choose to seek you first today, Lord. We choose to go out of this year stronger than ever in the mighty name of Jesus. And for those that might not feel strong, I speak physical strength over them today in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for an awesome day in every way. And we say, Holy Spirit, have your way. We are expecting signs, wonders, and miracles in this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's open our Bibles to Psalm 65 and verse 11. Really, in praying about and thinking about this class being the last one of 2021, I thought, wow, it's time for us to finish strong, right? So as we look forward into 2022, we don't want to neglect the last week of 2021, where we should be expecting to finish this year stronger than ever because of what the word says. Psalm 65, verse 11 says, You crown the year with your bounty and goodness, and the tracks of your chariot wheels drip with fatness. The luxuriant pastures in the uncultivated country drip with moisture, and the hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows are clothed with flocks, and the valleys are also covered with grain. They shout for joy, and they sing together. Glory to God. So you know what? What this is talking about is he crowns our year with goodness. He crowns our year with bounty and goodness. And you know what that is saying is crowning the year or finishing the year. In other words, he's crowning our year. We're in full expectation of that. We're decreeing and declaring that over our life today that we are finishing stronger than ever in our 2021. He's crowning this year with his goodness and his bounty, or his provision, or his increase. You could say it that way as well. And if you haven't seen that in your life, turn your faith switch on on the inside and believe God to really do something powerful in your life this week because 2021 is not over yet, right? And he is crowning our year with goodness or his advantage, and the tracks of your chariot wheels drip with fatness. You know, there's another translation that says that even the hard places, even the hard places drip with his abundance. So literally, he's, we're, we're decreeing this today. He's crowning our year with his goodness or his advantage. And even the tough places we've been through this year, we're still seeing his increase and his provision coming off of those places that even the hard places drip with abundance. Glory to God. Because after all, you know, when we look at the word, we can say, you know, John 10, 10 is an often go-to scripture, right? Where the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. We can focus on that abundant life, no matter what the enemy's tried to do in your life this year. We focus on how we're crowning this year with his abundance, with God's abundance with the abundance that Jesus already purchased for us. So that's a really powerful thing to declare over your life this week. And say, he's crowning my year with his goodness. And even the tough places of my life, oh, they are dripping with abundance. 
You know, because as you declare a thing, and we're going to look at that verse 2 out of Job 22. Job 22 and verse 28. You shall also decide. So you decide and decree a thing, and it shall be established for you. And the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. So you decide. You have a choice to make. Are you finishing 2021 stronger than ever? And is he crowning your year with his goodness and his bounty? And are the, even the hard places, are they beginning to show forth his abundance? Amen. They do as long as you decree and declare a thing. Amen. You have to mix your faith with the word of God in order for it to be working in your life, in order for you to see it come alive in you. So Job 22, 28, you shall decide, and you shall decree a thing. So you got to say something, right? You can't, even though you're looking at me today, and you got that smile on your face, right? You got your Bible open, you got your coffee ready. You know, you still need to open your mouth and say some things, right? I'm preaching to you today, but I'm encouraging you to be making some declarations this week about how God is crowning this year with his goodness. And even your tough places in life of 2021, oh, they're dripping with abundance. Can't you see how God has turned it all around? Amen? Because you decide and you decree a thing. And the rest of that goes like this. And it shall be established for you. So the things I'm deciding and decreeing that are in line with the word of God, it's going to be established for me. In other words, it's going to happen. We're going to see it, we're going to see it that way. And the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. So the things I'm decreeing and I'm declaring are being established. They're being fixed. They're being put in motion in my life, in other words. And therefore, his light is going to shine upon it. Glory to God. You're going to see the evidence of Jesus in my life. You're going to see the evidence in how Jesus helped me to finish 2021 stronger than ever. Amen? Because that's what the word says. God, do you believe it, church? Do you believe it? I believe it. As we decree and we declare a thing, it is fixed and established for us, and his light shines on our path. So going back to Psalm 65, 11, he crowns our year with goodness. Say this, he crowns my year with his goodness. And even the tough places are dripping with his abundance. Everyone is going to see God's goodness over my life for 2021, going into 2022, which is all about the new. Woo, in Jesus' name, amen. How important that is. We decree some things today. So let's look at Psalm 23 in line with some declarations. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in lack. He makes me lie down in fresh green pastures. He leads me beside the still and restful waters. He refreshes and restores my life. He leads me in the paths of righteousness, uprightness, and right standing with him not for my earning it, but for his namesake. Yes, though I walk through the deep, sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil, for you are with me. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my brimming cup runs over. Surely, only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life, and through the length of my days, the house of the Lord and his presence shall be my dwelling place. Glory to God. So I want to use this as our declaration today, as one of them. As we talk about how the Lord is crowning our year with his goodness, I'm going to say it this way. I'm decreeing a thing. I'm seeing it just manifest in my life. In other words, I'm going to say this. The Lord is my shepherd, right? Therefore, I have no lack. Glory to God. So lack be gone. You don't belong to me. The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me and guides me. 
There is nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking in him. In fact, Psalm 84, let's hold our finger there and go to Psalm 84 and verse 11. It says, for the Lord is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows grace and favor and glory on us, and no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Glory to God. So right there, he's not going to withhold any good thing from me because I'm, I'm following him. Because as we prayed in the very beginning, it's important what you choose to seek first. You know, I know Christmas Day was yesterday. We all had, it was a wonderful time. And at the same time, some, some of you all might feel a little bit tired today, right? But you came to church. Or you got up and you tuned in online. Either way, you are seeking first his kingdom. And because you are, you're seeking first his kingdom. You're looking into the word of God today. And then all these other things are going to be added unto you. In other words, the things you're believing God for are coming to pass because you're seeking him first. Amen? So as we decree some things over our life today, we can say, the Lord, he is my shepherd, I shall not be in lack, because he does not withhold any good thing from me. Amen? Amen. So let's keep on going. Verse 2, he makes me lie down in tender green pastures. You know, green signifies provision and prosperity, by the way. He leads me beside the still and restful waters. Glory to God. So he leads us beside the still and restful waters. He makes me lie down in green pastures. In other words, when I'm following the Lord, I'm seeking him first. All these other things are added, and his way of doing things, all these other things are going to be added unto me. He leads as long as I let him be Lord of my life. You know, the Lord means he is your leader. You're following after him. He is Lord over it all. In other words, you have to choose to put him in that place in your life. We can say, we know Jesus, but are you letting him be Lord in your life? Are you letting him lead you in your life? Or are you still saying, hmm, I can say the Lord is my shepherd, but am I really following after him? Because I am following after him. He's leading me to these green pastures or these places of provision and these still and restful waters because the Lord, he is my shepherd. Amen. And it's because I'm following him, I have no lack. See how I'm doing that today? So we're talking the word, we're decreeing it as we go, and how important that is, because we're decreeing a thing and we're seeing it done in our life. Amen? Some people use this chapter as a memorial service, funeral type of verses, and honestly, I believe these verses are for the living. Because as we're reading it, we're reading, hey, the Lord, he's my shepherd. As long as I'm letting him lead and guide me in my life, that I'm not going to have any lack. He's going to lead me to this green, this green grass, which is his provision, his abundance, which goes along with the first chapter we went to, how God is crowning our year with his goodness, and even the tough places are dripping with abundance. So verse 3, we can say, He refreshes and he restores my life. He leads me in the paths of righteousness, not for my earning it, but for his name's sake. And we can say, Matthew 6, says this, I seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things are added unto me. So he refreshes and he restores my life. He leads me in those paths of righteousness. Amen? Because I'm seeking him first. So therefore, all these other things are going to be added unto me. And verse 4, yes though, I, yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil, for you are with me. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort me. So even, the, even if you walk through some tough places in 2021, you didn't stay there. You have to choose not to stay there, by the way. Amen? Maybe grief or sorrow or different things try to get on your life this year. And you can say, you know, even though I walked through that valley, I did not stay there. Because this is his promise. It says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. So we recognize that the Lord, he is our shepherd. He leads us and he guides us. And even though if we walk through any tough places, 
this last year, we can say, I didn't stay in those places. Because after all, when the Lord is my shepherd, he will lead me through all of that. You know, not into that. God doesn't do that. He doesn't lead us into the, remember, the thief is the one that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But because the Lord is our shepherd, he brings you out. Amen? That's the key. Because the Lord is your shepherd, and you're following his lead. No matter what the enemy tries to do in your life, God will lead you out. The Lord, who is your shepherd, will lead you out. Amen? Because you know, some people camp out in that valley, by the way. Some people, when they have something disappointing happen, um, a challenge come up in their life, they begin to, the enemy just lies to a person's mind in that. And they camp out in that place. When you need to look at what the word says and say, nope, even if I walk through that valley, <laughs> I'm not staying there because the Lord, he is my shepherd. Amen? Because he's leading me out of that. That's why it said I walk through. I don't stay in. Amen? Amen. Verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. That's his anointing, his burden-removing, yoke-destroying power. So he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. In other words, you can ha we have all had enemies or people that have spoken bad against us in our life, right? And we can say, I've used this verse before. Lord, I thank you. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. In other words, as long as I'm sitting at your table, he's always going to be providing. Everything's going to turn out all right. No matter what enemy I have, as long as I'm sitting at the Lord's table, everything is going to be good, Right? I'm going to be provided for. I'm going to lack no good thing, like the verses before said. He's going to lead me to those green grass, that green grass and still waters. In other words, I can keep my peace in the midst of all of that because I'm choosing to be seated at the Lord's table. Amen? Because he prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies, and we choose to need to sit down at that table instead of getting up and fighting against somebody or letting Somebody, or when you let somebody get on your last nerve and you've got to have the final say-so, mm, right? We've all been there. We've all done that, right? So I need to choose to sit down at his table, right? And not choose to take the bait that the enemy has for me to be offended or to be unforgiving. Amen? Psalm 119, 165 says, Great peace have they who love thy law, and nothing shall offend them or cause them to stumble. When offense tries to come knocking at your door, you're better off to sit at the Lord's table. Say, no, uh offense, you're over here. I'm going to come over here and sit down at the Lord's table. In other words, I'm going to sit down in that place of knowing the Lord is my shepherd. He's leading me. He's the one guiding me. I'm not going to get caught up in what other people say and or do against me because the Lord, he is my shepherd. He's leading me to those quiet places, that still peaceful water. So therefore, I'm going to respond out of my place of peace. Amen? And I'm not going to, because I know his word, Psalm 119, 165, great peace have they who love thy law, and nothing shall offend them or cause them to stumble. When I know his word and I let his word get on the inside of me, I'm going to recognize offenses when they try to come knocking at my door, right? And I'm going to say, uh -uh. I know what his word says. I'm going to keep my peace. I'm going to keep sitting at the Lord's table. And right there, because I do, my, my, he anoints my head with his oil. In other words, his anointing goes from the top of my head all the way down as I choose to stay seated at his table. In other words, he puts his burden-removing, yoke-destroying power. Isaiah 10.27 talks about his anointing, which is the burden-removing, yoke-destroying power of God. Amen? That's what I'm covered in. I'm covered in the blood of Jesus, and I'm also covered in his anointing. And so are you, as long as you let the Lord be your shepherd. And verse 6, I like to quote this pretty often. Surely, or only goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And throughout the length of days, the house of the Lord and of his presence shall be my dwelling place. So surely, only goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. Amen? And that goes right back on to our Psalm 65, verse 11, how he crowns our year with his goodness or his bounty. And even the tough places 
or the hard places, right? Where the chariot wheels seem to want to get stuck in, drip with abundance. So even those tough things, when the Lord is my shepherd, they drip with abundance. Literally, that I... I'm a candidate of one of those God turns it around type of thing. No matter what tries to come, God turns it around as I decree and declare these words over my life. Amen? So I'm expecting this year to be stronger than ever. That's finishing stronger than ever and entering into our new 2022, where I'm super excited about that as well. But I don't want to lose sight of my final week of 2021 in the process where I'm saying, ah, the Lord He is crowning my year with his goodness. I'm using Psalm 23 as one of my examples of declarations I'm declaring over my life, by the way. That's not just for this year. That's for all the time, by the way. (laughs) Amen? But 2021, we are saying we're finishing this year stronger than ever. And, you know, if you've been through something, we just declare that you begin to see his abundance shining in your life. That what the enemy meant for your harm God is turning it for good. Amen? That any brokenness you've experienced, there's healing today in Jesus' name. He heals the brokenhearted, and he binds up all their wounds. So today, you receive your healing. If Christmas wasn't all you thought it would be, you know, hey, remember the one that we celebrate in the first place, who is Jesus. He is the Lord. He is our shepherd. He's leading you to great places in in life. You've got great things that he wants you to do. And so we receive, if you have any disappointment today, receive your healing today. He heals all the brokenhearted and binds up all their wounds. So we decree and declare over your life today, any woundedness in your life is bound up and healed. Amen? In Jesus' name. So we just thank, thank the Lord for another awesome day. And we're excited for 2022. So I'm going to stop right here. And I want to encourage you, just like Job 22, 28 says, you decide and you decree a thing and you see it done. We just got done decreeing and declaring Psalm 23 over our life as an example of that. But you choose this year, at the end of this year, this week, I want you to really think about the things you want to decree over your life setting yourself up for what's next in 2022. Because how you leave a season really determines how strong you enter the next. Okay? So you don't want to grow weary at all this week. You want to say, "Uh ah, he's crowning my year with his goodness. I'm seeing his advantage springing up and springing out this entire week in my life. And even the hard places I went through in 2021, oh, I see how God turned it around. I see God's testimony springing up in my life and how his abundance came in stronger than ever. As I enter 2022, I go forth praising him and seeking first his kingdom and watch what he will do. Amen? Watch what he will do in 2022. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel like that's going to be a jumping place or leaping, a launching place for next week. So you don't want to miss that. So thank you for joining us today friends online, and to our church family here. Super excited that you all came today. And we're going to spend some time fellowshipping before we go into the sanctuary. So tune back in at 1030 and hear another word from God that will change your life forever and help you finish 2021 stronger than ever. So know that we love you and we're praying for you and we'll see you soon.